Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested here at San Diego Comic-Con 2023. One of the coolest companies and products that we've seen the past couple of years is Robots from RoboSend, who are with Brian, Marketing Director of RoboSend. Brian, good to meet you. Thank you, nice to meet you as well. Now, your product that you guys launched of the flagship Optimus Prime and the Elite Optimus Prime was one of the coolest things we saw go viral on the internet recently, right? It was Super a, exciting, yes. It actually transforms. The thing yes. that fans of Transformers have been waiting for for so long, um, and you guys made it possible because you guys are a robotics company. That is true, So yes. tell me about Robeson, what you guys do, what, and your expertise, and how you got involved in making real Transformers. So Transformers is actually a product of, you know, because it is a robot, right? But then as a robotics company, one of our goals is to make it screen to reality. So that nostalgic interactive experience that you were actually ima in your imagination space when, while you're younger, now, because of you know, advancements in technology, we can actually have this experience in person, now in your hands. And that was kind of the main, I guess, the genesis of I, why we are making the robotics that we do. So from here, we are trying to advance, the, um, I guess, the what robotics, how it's used, but also take that sort of um, bridge that gap between you know, what we know as robots in Boston Dynamics, but also you know, what we know as you know, service robots but bring in more emotional value, such as you know working with you know, IPs like Transformers or Disney and things like that. It's gotta be an incredible technical challenge, because I know you guys had humanoid robots of this kind of toy scale before, not tied to IP that people could program and, yes. and move around, but those didn't transform. So turning something that's humanoid, but also can turn into a vehicle or a dinosaur, is an, must be an engineering challenge. Definitely is, and I think part of it is that, you know, because we're able to do it in a smaller scale, I think what our learnings are from the mechanics and the you know, engineering from the smaller scale, it could probably be applied in a much larger scale in the future. Oh, I mean, I've noticed, and this is Grimlock, of course. He's what you guys just announced this yes. week. Uh, can we see him transform? Yes, definitely. Uh, so Grimlock comes in multiple actions, whether in robot form or Dinobot. But I think everyone's excited about the whole transformation process, so I have a transform. You know, when we look at some of the Transformers films, they don't have to worry about conservation of mass necessarily. They can break all sorts of laws of physics. You guys can't, and I can see even when you talk about learnings, when you guys put out the trailer for Optimus, I see some of the similar kind of design ethos in terms of the panels flipping out and folding in to, to Grimlock here. I mean, part of it is, um, because there's, you know, when we're working with Transformers, there's always fans. So there's hardcore fans who are collectors. We have to stay true to how it transforms from oh. the original cartoon. So this is actually, so the same for trailer as well as Optimus and Grimlock, it follows the actual transformation that is done in the 1984 G1. You're looking at the animation, looking at which parts Correct. of the panel. Those are design constraints. Yes. <laughs> and so you have to fit the motors in, Correct. have to get it to actually all fit in the same volume. Uh, and still retain, like if someone wanted, was a, trans and there are a lot of Transformer collectors out there, yeah. this can still be an idealized version of Grimlock. Exactly, exactly. Wow. So uh, the look and feel, everything was, yeah, we try to stay true as close as possible to yeah, Grimlock from G1. And then there are parts here, because you're doing finish work on both interior and out then. Because when he transforms, there are parts that aren't seen here, but they have to have the same kind of Transformer Correct. Uh, aesthetic. So one of the things is that we are actually uh, saying this is the world's first dual form bipedal robot. Meaning that the dino mode actually has its own two legs yeah. and then robot form has its own two oh, separate legs. Oh, wow, that's right. And it can actually walk in both forms. So this is the world's first auto converting dual form bipedal robot. Is that because of the strength of your servos and what allows for that balance to work? Yeah, definitely there's a six axis IMU, so it measures the gravity and knows mm. its balance. So that there's motors are always checking in with the, you know, the, I guess the inertia measuring unit. Yeah, yeah. And so it actually is uh, it's allowing to balance itself while the motors are adjusting. And that's a, that's happening in real time. It's just not like, not like a pre-calibrated thing. That is correct. Because depending on the texture and the surface, it's tries to. So, I mean, it still has tough time on, you know, I think um, heavy, Carpet. Yes, yes, yes. Smoother surface is better, but you know it still knows what you know what the surface is like. It doesn't have any sensors, but it understands its balance. Right, right, right. I mean, I'm using in, in sense. It, right. it is getting feedback from the environment. It is a, it's a sensor, and each of the servos has that, and you're feeding into the brain of the system. Correct. 
Wow. Um, one of the things that we were most impressed by with the Optimus wasn't just the transformation, but what you could do with Optimus um, with pre-scripted pre, uh, actions, but also user-generated actions. Yes. Um, and that's something that you guys are also bringing to all the rest of the line? Yeah, so for all of our products, ever since the Optimus, as you mentioned, uh, even our non-transforming Bumblebee, uh, we actually have all the capabilities, voice commands, as well as programming, manual programming, uh, uh, what is it, uh, block-based programming. Uh, so there's voice com uh, programming as well. So you could actually tell Grimlock to move its arms up and then it'll do that. So we are also working on other types of programming where uh, you're able to mimic, actually. So if it's camera-based, you're able to see yourself eventually and lift your hand up, robot will mirror that and actually lift your hand up. Interesting. So you're doing some type of uh, computer vision-based you know, rigging, skeletal modeling of exactly. a humanoid, exactly. a, hu a user, right? Exactly. And then mapping that to the, the system. That's not, right. that's not trivial. <laughs> It's uh, not. So yeah, hopefully it will come out soon. So I know our team is working hard to develop that right now. So and try to get it out. Uh, we did announce it in back in late May in China uh, for an event that we had. So it is a work in progress. But yeah, hopefully we'll get that. So there's be multiple ways of programming. It's just not you don't have to be a programmer. Right. You could actually physically move, and it will. You can program the robot. I mean, we've seen a lot of the your customers and fans really run with the programming capabilities. What Have you guys been surprised at some of the animations that people are able to generate and how far are they able to push the, the animation? Definitely, I think what's interesting was probably the music videos we've seen. Some of uh, some like, uh, there was one with um, Elvis where someone did an Optimus, uh, had the Optimus do the Elvis dance with the knee buckling and it was pretty awesome. We actually saw also uh, a K-pop BTS dance someone did. Wow. But one was also was interesting was uh, K-pop girls generation. That's what we put on Optimus. So it was kind of that one was a little bit awkward, but definitely it's interesting that people are pushing the envelope uh, with a lot of the you know different kind of programming that you can do with the robotics. So it's really good to see that you know people are interacting with it, and you know we want to actually procure this sort of group and make sure that you know there are more user uh, generated actions that are uploaded and downloaded. And, we yeah. trying to support that community. That platform is so cool that you can just browse. You know, if someone is just wants to get more actions and animations, they can just download what other people have created, see the most you know, popular ones. And every time I've downloaded one on our Optimus, it's just been very like it's blowing our minds. Like we, there's like we we watch it and we don't think can it succeed? Can it succeed? And when it <laughs> succeeds and does the full animation, it's been it's just so gratifying to see. Um, and it, that makes it more fun, I guess, uh, to play with exactly. in the long term. Yeah. So I mean, there's you know there's 42 voice commands in uh, you know, Grimlock, but then there's you know, you can only repeat 42 points you know, yeah. thereafter. So having that ability to do more things, you know, after and have an infinite possibility of play, I think that's the kind of thing, the interesting thing about programming. Wow. Um, obviously, we want to give too much away about what you guys come have in the pipeline, but is it safe to say you guys are continuing to work with us license and thinking about more Transformers and more robots in, in that world? Definitely, I think we've only came up with uh, two or three robots so far with Transformers, so there's a lot more characters. Yeah. And we're excited to um, have worked on, uh, or currently still working on and developing uh, more Transformers on the way. So uh, we actually have something probably coming up in the next uh, January we'll be announcing. Uh, but until then, uh, I cannot confirm nor deny. <laughs> but it will be just as much excitement was behind Grimlock. It will also be have a lot of excitement behind that one. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for sharing with us some of the story and sharing with us the Grimlock here. It's great to meet you at Comic Con. Nice to meet you as well. Hope you have a wonderful show. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick, my measuring forearm, uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol, and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body, because I use mine every single day.